Hi everybody, good morning. Look at that beautiful sky through my sunroof. It's so pretty. Um, I love that. This car has history for me. My mom drove me around in this car. I passed my driver's test in this car. I took this car to college. Um, I've driven it cross country several times and now I have my baby who drives in the back of my car, who rides in the back of my car. So I love this car and I love my sunroof. I didn't, never could use it um, in Washington state where I came from because it was so rainy all the time. Um, and I get to use it all the time now. But um, I had um, a dream I wanted to share that um, is from probably, I wanna say like a little bit over two weeks ago. Um, that was a personal dream um, that I had about Jesus. So as I've mentioned in some other videos, this is only my fifth video, but um, Jesus does show up in my dreams quite a lot. Like he will, I will see him in my dreams. And um, anybody wondering, and I think Jesus can present himself differently, right? But like for me, all I can say is that he looks exactly like, if anyone's watched The Passion of the Christ, that's what he looks like. That's what he sounds like. Like, and that movie, I believe, was anointed. Like, there was so much spiritual warfare, like, so much like of an attack on that film. I don't know if you guys know, but Jim Caviezel, who's also JC, interestingly, like, Jesus Christ, Jim Caviezel, like, they've made that connection. But he was actually struck by lightning um, while he was, like, doing the crucifixion scene. I think that he had, like, really horrible migraines. He dislocated his shoulder or something. Like, he was attacked, like... Satan and there is actually an interesting trend of um like Christian film sets being struck by lightning like it's it's a thing um but yeah to me that's always like a telltale sign that something is sort of like anointed if it's attacked a lot because the devil doesn't attack anything that's not valuable right like anyway of all the Christian movies tv shows things like that that is the closest and interestingly it also is very very close to Akiana, I, I mispronouncing her name, Krameric, that little eight-year-old girl, she's my age now, we were born in the same year, but she had that dream of Jesus and painted him, and it's like this extremely lifelike portrait that she did as an eight-year-old. It's called The Prince of Peace. I encourage everybody to look up that painting. That is also exactly what he looks like in my dreams, and like it um, matches pretty closely to The Passion of the Christ. So anyway, I just find that interesting. Um, there have been some historians and theologians who have done overlays of like the Shroud of Turin and the negative with the Prince of Peace and it's like very close. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna get into the dream I had. So I've been meeting recently with a lady from First Baptist in Houston. Um, just to kind of get some advice. You know, I've been through a lot. <laughs> I've been through a lot. Um, last few years and just kind of getting some wise spiritual counsel from this lady, this, this lady who I believe is in her fifties, probably who goes to the first Baptist church here in Houston. Um, I'm not, I'm non-denominational, but like I have connections in Houston with a lot of people from different like churches here. And she is amazing and like totally a woman of God. And I just like love her to death. But, um, I was meeting with her and something that I was saying that kind of came out emotionally for me was that like, if you guys have ever seen Jesus in a dream or had like a true encounter with him, like you will understand this is that it is such an overwhelming sensation of love and being in his presence that like, if you then don't have that for a while, it's like homesickness, like an incredible homesickness. It's almost like heartbreak. I don't know how to exactly put it correctly, but like think about your best friend or, you know, your spouse or somebody who you were so close with. And then maybe they like, you know, just go somewhere. Like you don't know when you're going to see them again. Like maybe your best friend goes to a different, to college in a different state, or maybe somebody goes like, off to war even or something and you're like when am I gonna see this person again who I love so much and like that's what it's like like I've seen Jesus I've had these ex these um encounters with him and then it's not like he tells me like I'm gonna show up in your dream on March whatever like I'll see you then it's like you have no idea when the next time is that you're gonna see him like that like that vividly um you just don't know 
and it can be really, really painful actually. And like, it's, it probably sounds crazy to anybody who has not actually experienced this, but like I have seen him and he has shown up to me in a personal way before. So I was just telling her and I was actually like, I got emotional and I was like, you know, crying even. And I was like, I miss Jesus. Like I miss him. Like when am I going to see him again? Like I am so sad. And so we prayed that he would show up, um, for me. And then the very, I think it was either that night or the night right after that, like he showed up in a dream, but it was interesting. It was, I don't know what the message was, but I'm just going to share what happened. So in the dream, um, it was me and a group of other women. Interestingly, it was, it was just women. We were in a circle, like holding hands in a circle. And like Jesus was not at the center of the circle. He was holding hands with us. So we were all holding hands in a circle and like where we were oriented, it was like me. And then I was the person who was directly across from Jesus. Like the other people were kind of like on our left and our right. And it was kind of like me and him across from each other. Right. And we were all in a circle holding hands and, um, everybody was talking. Like I knew in the dream that we were praying, like that is what we were doing, but everybody was so loud. And like, we were talking to each other, talking to him, like just, it's like, you couldn't even hear anything he was saying or if he was trying to speak. Cause we were all being like, we were all just talking. And so then I said in my dream, I looked at everybody and I, I said, we need to be quiet and just listen or yeah, I wrote it down. I'm trying, whenever I do these videos, I try to get it as accurately as possible, like to what was said. Like I, I wrote notes on it, but I, I, that's what I said was we need to be quiet and just listen, or we need to just listen and stop talking. It was like something like that. I think it was, we need to just listen. And, um, I then dropped hands with like the group. Um, and I kind of tried to step forward to come in closer to Jesus to hear him. But then he looked at me almost like, like you, like that look, you know, like, like the, like check yourself kind of like scolding, not scolding. Scolding is too harsh. Just almost like, you know, the look, right. Jesus gave me the look. And then I was like, basically, you know, repented for being judgmental. That's what I knew in the dream is I was like, you know, I, I said, I'm sorry, Jesus. And like, I knew that it was for being judgmental, I guess. That was just like the knowing I had. And then he smiled at me and like, it was all good, but then it was still kind of like quiet. Right. And I stepped forward to him. And like I said, like I was directly across from him in the dream and I just put my ear to his chest. Like I laid my head on his chest. I put my ear to his chest and, um, I was just listening for his heartbeat and his breathing which is like very interesting. And I was just sit, laying there on his chest, like standing, but, and I was just listening for his heartbeat and his breathing and it was just silent. And then that I woke up. Right. And we were all just listening for Jesus and what he was going to say. And I was even listening to those, like almost listening to just, yeah, like I said, like heartbeat and breathing, which is like so beautiful. And like, I don't know. I just, I've been praying about this dream. I think like, you know, God is the author of life and like the heartbeat is, you know, our life source, like the heart, everything, like the emotions, not literally in a medical sense, but symbolically, you know, the way that we understand it on a spiritual level, like emotions, your mind, will, emotions is your heart, right? That's what that comes from your heart and, you know, your soul and your, that, a lot of that is tied in obviously to, um, the heartbeat. Also, the Bible says that the power of the life is in the blood and your heart is the pump that pumps your blood through your body. So, I mean, maybe I'll make like a second video on this, but I just thought that, that was so deep. And then obviously the breathing, we know like Yahweh is actually a lot of scholars have um, analyzed that. And what it actually means is that um, you have a lot of the time, um, just the sound of breath, like the sound of wind through the trees. Um, all of that is actually that, that extra vowel was added in later by scholars who were trying to kind of make it flow better because it was just, um, consonants, but that sound is really, um, the sound of breath. Um, and like God is the breath of life, obviously, like that's how everything started was breath, you know, through the nostrils, you know, of the man. And like, it's just, I think it's very deep. And as I'm saying this, the wind is like suddenly just blowing through my car but like, it was such, such a deep thing. Um, and I don't think it was some kind of message about like, 
you know, not being able to speak to Jesus, not being able to talk to each other, or talk in a context of prayer. Like, I don't think that's what it meant at all. I think it was more like when we're talking so much that we can't hear what he's saying. Like, if you have a friend and you're talking to your friend, you don't go into these, like, massive monologues. I mean, sometimes we do. I do that all the time. If I'm, like, venting, like, I'll, I'll go into a monologue, but then I wait for, to, like, hear a, a response. And it was almost like we were not listening to him. Like, he was there, and it's like we were so almost into ourselves or into what we were doing or talking about like we couldn't hear him and that's kind of more what I got from that is like we need to remember to like stop and listen and to be maybe tuned into God is in every aspect of our lives because God is in everything like if you think about that sound of air that really means that every living thing is always praising his name like whether it's just through breath through it like the wind through the trees it's animals even like everything is constantly saying the name of God like like Yahweh like that's what that is and I think it's like maybe looking for God when we feel like he's not speaking in an obvious way. He still is always speaking. Like he's everywhere. And even in the breath, even in the trees, even in the heartbeat, God is speaking. So maybe that's what it, what that means. Um, but somebody, I think somebody else will, like this will have meaning for you, not just for me. So um, pray about it, take it to the Lord. And yeah, it was a beautiful dream. God answered my prayer. He showed up in my dream because I was so sad and heartbroken. I just missed him. And yeah, I miss him all the time. Like when you have that type of a encounter with, with God, even if just one like encounter where you see him like that, it's, it's life changing. And then all you want is more of him. Like, honestly. Um, so yeah, that's my, that was my dream. All right, guys have a wonderful day. The sky behind me is so beautiful. I love it. I'm going to go and be outside now for a bit, but I'll talk to you all later. Bye.